Hey guys, I'm Nick. Today's question comes in from someone named Jacob. They live right here in the Navarre area. They've been fishing for a few years from the kayak and they have a question about how to avoid wind knots. Okay, avoiding wind knots. We did a video a while back about this. Actually, I've probably done a few over the years. I did the last one in the backyard. Um, there are a few simple things, okay? One, it's very, very important that you're getting your reel spooled professionally. One of the things I see all the time is people will spool them in the garage. You know, they have their wife or someone else like hold the spool with a you know, pencil and they just crank it on there. It makes it form a few different 90 degree angles and it adds line twists. The other thing that happens is when you're doing it like that, you can't get this tight. I mean, like you can't squeeze this and you shouldn't be able to squeeze this. Um, it's very, very common that people put it on there very, very loose and then you just run into a ton of issues. Real wise, you could have some problems with your reel. This line roller bearing could go bad. It could cause some line twists and that'll give you a little bit of wind knot issue. Um, outside of that, you could have spacers underneath this spool. If you find your reel to stack too much line on the bottom or too much line at the top, your spacing is incorrect. If it's stacking too much on the bottom, then you would remove a spacer and that would lower the spool. So this is a little shim, okay? It usually come in the box so you have extras. Now, if you find that it's stacking too much on the top, you would add a shim or a spacer and that would raise the spool. Uh, out of the box, I've only ever had to adjust one of these Stratics. Um, you know, we get five or so new ones every year. Uh, so I've only had to do it once. So it's not very common that that's the problem. Usually your wind knots are caused by the user. People hate to admit that they might be doing something wrong, but it's a fact. So if you're spooling it at your house, you're gonna run into a ton of issues, okay? Go down to your local tackle shop, have them spool it on the spooler. It'll be tightly packed, it'll be evenly stacked, and you're gonna avoid a lot of issues from the start. Um, there are some reels, that are just gonna have some issues, okay? They don't stack the line as well. So these, you know, the worm gear here is very thorough. It stacks it very evenly, that's important. Um, outside of that, when you're casting, you wanna make sure that the lure you're using is designed for the rod you're using and the line that you're using is designed for the rod you're using. Now this rod is designed for 18 to 14 pound test. Uh, that rating is usually in mono, so this is, you know, 15 pound braid, so it fits in there perfectly as far as diameter. It's designed to throw a quarter ounce to a five eighths ounce lure, uh, which is perfect for everything we throw inshore. We don't ever have anything, you know, any issues. You want to keep your braid and your lure in that, you know, in that weight span. If you get outside of that, you're going to have issues. If you're trying to throw a, you know, a very light lure with a very heavy action rod, the rod's not going to load up correctly. Correctly, It's not going to throw the lure properly. You're going to have issues. Uh, the One of the most common things I see all the time is people will cast out their lure, they cast it, let it hit the water, and then all this line, they have all this loose line that forms. And they just, oops, I failed. Let's try that again. Bail's open. And they just, well, all that did was pack a bunch of super, you know, loosely packed line. So as soon as that, you know, tight line comes with that lure, bloop, it tightens down around that, you know, loosely placed line. The next time you go to cast, the tight line pulls the loose line off the reel. You have this huge wind knot. So really a wind knot is caused by when you cast, the wind takes the line, it forms a huge, you know, loop or bellow in your line. And then you just click, start reeling. You avoid that by casting, keeping your hand here and stopping the braid with your finger closing the bail manually and then reeling. That little bit of a difference of not allowing there to be any slack or loose line from your cast makes a world of difference. Um, that is usually the number one thing people are doing wrong. So before you assume that you bought bad braid or you know your reel is junk, look at how you're putting line on your reel look at how you're casting quit flipping the bail with the handle and use your hand stop that line as the lure hits the water um, those are the simplest things those are the simplest solutions uh whether you use power pro suffix you know there's a billion different types of braid <clears throat> there are tons of people who aren't having problems so if you're having the problem it's not the braid it's not the rod not the reel not the lure it is you so 
take the time, slow down, you won't have any issues. I will put a link to another video that I did on this in the backyard that shows me casting and it will help point you in a better direction. I appreciate you taking the time to submit your question, Jacob. I hope it helps. The other video will give you a more hands-on out in the backyard of me casting and show you how to stop that line with your finger. If you guys are watching and you have questions, there's a link below so you can submit your question. It directs you to our website and you click there. You just ask whatever you want to ask. I'll sit down right here and I'll do my best to help answer your question and point you in the right direction. As always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and I look forward to you booking your next adventure.